Radio. What we've got here is the most beautiful collection that's been donated to the Opal Centre of a really diverse assemblage of fossil material from one particular location. It's exciting because it's producing and providing a picture of, of, a, of a little spot on the bottom of a creek bed or on a, on a bottom of a flood overflow, something like that, 110 million years ago. So I ju I'll just unpack it for you because it's, it's pretty gorgeous material. This, for example, is the master list of all of these specimens. This is the sort of detail we have to go into in relation to each of these items. We talk about what the element is, what it represents, whether it's a tooth or bone or a bit of femur or toenail or whatever, and then and there's very detailed measurements. So there's basically hundreds of lists like that um, in the database accompanying the collection material. This particular area at the Cochrane, which is magnificent opal field west of Lightning Ridge, produced an extraordinary assortment of fossil material, a, a really broad assemblage. Um, I'm going to pull them out of the box, just they're unordered, so we're not, we're not going up the evolutionary tree or anything here. We'll start with theropod dinosaur material, some little vertebrae. So I really just want to give you an idea of the range of items available in particular locations. Now you can see there are possibly a tibia theropod, a little vertebra and the top of another vertebra. And this is this is little carnivorous dinosaur. So that's just one of the one of the animal types, the vertebrate types in the location. Bivalve shells, freshwater mussel shells, lungfish tooth plate. This is an unusually tiny one, very delicate, beautiful little specimen. Unidentified reptile pieces, definitely bone, but we don't know what sort of animal yet, and presumably reptile. This is trace fossil, little objects that are obviously organic in origin, but a little bit ambiguous, so we're not exactly certain. Worm tubes, worm casts, maybe coprolites, that sort of thing. This is an exciting little parcel. This is the plesiosaur teeth from this location. This is the greatest number of plesiosaur teeth we've found from one particular site. So it's a, it's a fairly important little collection. They're shed teeth, the teeth that were dropped from the animal as it fed, perhaps in the waterways. I think there's about nine specimens in this group which is pretty astonishing from one site and some of them are utterly exquisite. See this little one still in sitting on sandstone. There's beautiful gem green colour in that one. This one very fine. These long very long teeth probably from elasmosaurs rather than the pliosaurs which had the short necks. Crocodile tooth from the same area. This is dinosaur material too. This is plant-eating dinosaur there. This is the turtle material. Well, wow, lots and lots and lots of turtle stuff. And this is pretty extraordinary. For example, this is part of a turtle shoulder girdle with red color on a very dark background. Absolutely gemmy sort of material. Very beautiful. So there were possibly two or three different types of turtles in this location. Lots of little bits of turtle shell. Probably the most exciting material from this site is... This has got to be the most beautiful piece of turtle shell on the planet. There. You can see it's, it's fully opalized. The opal has saturated right through all the pore structure, the internal structure of the bone. All the anatomical bone details are preserved and yet it's all suffused with, with this extraordinary opal colour. You can see the, the colour goes right through, absolutely all the way through. That's and okay. all of surface texture is preserved. Little runnels and stipples and divots and pinpricks. That's the edge of a scale there on the shell. So there's super duper. More turtle shell in here. This is a smaller turtle also coloured, little tiny pieces. This is the costal, that's one of the bones 
from across the top of the shell with the rib trace and you can see again full of opal colour which doesn't affect the scientific information and of course it means they're far more valuable. So it's pretty exciting stuff. We're very, very pleased to have this material in the collection. Bag of plant pieces from the same site. The plant material demonstrates pretty strongly that this was a freshwater location, a, a terrestrial site. And the other thing that sort of proves that is a big lungfish tooth plate. A much larger one than the one I showed you a minute ago. See, it's been, it's been broken up as it was dug out. But it's been mended and it's a very large lungfish. Lungfish have two of those in the lower jaw and two in the upper jaw. So that, that was quite a big animal. And strictly fresh water. They absolutely can't survive in a marine environment. We've got this beautiful material providing a picture of a whole assemblage of plants and animals 110 million years ago. I mean, you can't ask for anything more exciting and wonderful. This video was made with the support and participation of the Australian Opal Centre. If you visit Lightning Ridge, and you should visit Lightning Ridge, you should visit the Australian Opal Centre. You can follow the AOC on Facebook, the link is below, to keep up to date with news and events. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to IDU on YouTube, and following IDU on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. The links are all down below. Thank you for watching.